Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. I want to welcome you all back to my channel. In today's home exercise tutorial, or really just today's tutorial, we are going to go over mental imagery, or sometimes it's called visualization, mental practice, mental training, really just the idea or the concept of visualizing certain activities that you want to accomplish and the role that that might have in contributing to or helping you to enhance your home exercise program. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what mental imagery is, what the benefits are of it, how it's used in real life, how you can use it in your home exercise program, and then whether or not this is beneficial for you in your particular problems. But before we get into all of that, if you're new to my channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. And now let's go ahead and dive into this topic. So first and foremost, what is mental practice and kind of how is it used in real life? And it's been studied a lot and it's been used a lot in sports and sport performance, but really it's just a method of visualizing yourself going through a particular movement without actually moving your body. And now before any of you go out there and close down your gym memberships and cancel your physical therapy because you think what I'm about to say is that this can replace actual physical practice and moving your body. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So the way mental imagery works or visualization works is that movement requires different parts of the brain to work together. So not just the parts of the brain that actually control the arm and the leg, but there's actually planning parts of the brain and kind of integration parts of your brain that where everything kind of meets up all the different areas of the brain that are involved in movement, everything kind of meets together before the brain actually sing signals out a command to move a body part. And now when they study this in sports and with athletes, what they found is that there is some carryover. So when they take images of the brain, when people are doing these mental imagery exercises, there's certain parts of the brain that are active, whether you are visualizing yourself performing a skill or whether you are actually moving the body and performing that skill. I think it's pretty amazing, so I wanted to share it with all of you because if I get excited about it, I automatically assume all of you are gonna get excited about it as well. So that is some of the literature that I have read on when, it re when they have studied this in athletes and sport performance. But whether you're an elite level athlete and you're trying to improve your performance in a particular sport or you are just a regular everyday Joe trying to get through your day, we use components of visualization all the time. You're walking, you see an obstacle out in front of you. There is a little bit of visualization that goes on because it's a new or a different or a challenging activity. You do visualize yourself going through the motions a little bit before you actually go through the motions. So there are little glimpses of this that we can probably all see in our day-to-day -day lives. And clinically, I know in practice, I see the value of it because I use it all the time. I try and have most of my patients try and visualize what I'm asking them to do, either by demonstrating it myself or having them watch themselves do it on their uninvolved arm. And I also do ask them to visualize themselves walking normally, things like that when they go home. And the feedback I get is that it actually does help. Now, when it comes to stroke recovery and does visualization improve motor function? I was a little bit disappointed in what the research shows at this point. There's really no strong evidence that these strategies actually improved motor function after a stroke. However, if you've been watching me for a while and you've heard me bring up research before, rehab and recovery is very much an art. You can't just solely rely on what the evidence shows. There is a little bit of an art to it. You can incorporate things as long as they're safe. So there are things that have value even if there's not a lot of strong evidence that supports it. And I see that in practice all the time. So it really is a combination of what does the research say and what have I seen over the years that has worked in practice and kind of bringing those two together. So I definitely see some value in this and I definitely think that you should give it a try, especially right now when you might not be getting as much of your physical therapy. This might just be one tool because it's easy and you can do it at home. So my suggestion is give it a try. 
So how do you perform visualization? First, there's the preparation. So you gotta have a time of day where you have about 10 minutes that you can set aside, find a quiet area with a low stimulation, no noise, as much as you can to just remove any stimulation. Lights, noise, kids, people if possible, which I know is kind of hard right now but you really do want your body to be relaxed as much as possible. And I recommend some sort of timer so that you're not being distracted by the clock or by the time, or maybe even by the thought of thinking, when is this gonna be over? For those of you who don't like to sit still for long periods of time. So I definitely recommend a stopwatch or some sort of timer. Once you're relaxed and you feel like you're in a somewhat resting state, now what I want you to do is I want you to take yourself back to your last physical therapy session. Think about what were you working on with your therapist? What body part were they moving? How did their hands feel on your body? How did the movement feel? If you were working on arm movement, how did your back muscles feel? How did your neck muscles feel? How'd your bicep feel? How'd the shoulder feel? How'd your hand feel? How did the therapist touch feel? Try and just take yourself back and recall as much of that experience as you can. And try and recreate an image of that movement in your head. So try and think about yourself performing that movement. And I recommend you just stay on one movement for about 10 minutes. Just visualize yourself, picture yourself doing that movement over and over and over again. When you can really feel it and you really feel like you're in that moment, in that experience, now, if it was a reaching activity, visualize yourself reaching into your cabinet to grab a cup, reaching up to your hair to comb your hair with your involved arm. Now, what about walking? If it was walking, visualize yourself walking. If you haven't walked in a while, I recommend watch other people walk. What looks normal to you? What looks natural to you and someone else? And try and get an image of that in your head and just visualize that. What does that feel like? What does it feel like to have both legs moving? Visualize yourself in that situation and your legs moving. Right, left, right, left, right, left. Just keep visualizing yourself taking those steps. Visualize yourself confidently stepping up onto a curb, stepping off of a curb, going up and down stairs. Just visualize yourself going through your day walking. What does that feel like? If you do this in therapy and your therapist is walking alongside you, what do their hands feel like on you? How are they helping you with the movement? Where are they standing? Maybe visualize yourself walking with their hands actually guiding you through the movements for a few repetitions and just keep doing it over and over and over again. Again, maybe one session you focus on the arm, one session you focus on the leg, but I would try and spend the entire 10 minutes just focusing on one task or one movement. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you give it a try. Um, I'd love for you all to give it a try and just leave in the comments whether or not it, it helped you to carry over some of these into actual real tasks of moving your body through the motion. And I'm almost doing this as my own little mini experiment, just because I think it works and just because I feel like it works with my patients. Um, again, I was a little discouraged by the research, so I'd love to get some of your feedback. Those of you, when you try it, what kind of results are you getting? Are you seeing any carryover into actual movement? So looking forward to hearing what you all say. As usual, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload new videos. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. You all have a great day.